I am a pro EAFC player, and I'm gonna give you my five tips on how to win more games in EAFC 24. And we're gonna follow a nice checklist for every tip here to make this as simple as possible. So for every tip, I'm gonna tell you the tip, I'm gonna show you how to perform it, and then we will analyze an example and show you where it's best used. Tip number one, the controlled sprint. This is a brand new feature in EAFC 24, and whenever they do this, it's always overpowered. This year's overpowered thing, is the controlled sprint and how you do it is really, really simple. When you're on the ball, use your left stick to decide what direction you wanna go and hold R1 at the same time. It really is as simple as that. The controlled sprint is basically when you wanna dribble, but you don't wanna sprint at full speed and you don't wanna walk. Let's call it a jog, it's right in the middle and the ball sticks close to your player, which means you're really hard to tackle. And before I show you an example, the controlled sprint is best used with players that have the technical play style or technical plus, or players with high dribbling stats. Let's analyze an example here with Hansen. Hansen has the technical play style. She's a really good dribbler, so the best kind of player to use. You can see here, I'm 2-1 down, looking for a goal. I get it with Hansen, I'm dribbling and dribbling. I then stop, and I realize I don't really have anywhere to go. Now, if I sprint in the box, I'm gonna be out of control, and if I walk, I'm gonna get tackled. So this is a perfect time to use control sprint. I have it here, we control sprint down the box, I become really hard to tackle, and then I put it into the near post. You see with the control sprint, the way it sticks to the player is like a certain animation that you can't get anywhere else. Let's take another look at a different clip. This time we have Puteas on the ball, another good dribbler. And I'm trying to get myself into the box. Now I know I wanna be hard to beat and I wanna be able to dribble. The control sprint is the best dribble you can ask for. So Puteas breaks into the box. He's couldn't, they can't get near it. Maybe hand blocks her. But even if she didn't, we're still in there, still in the space. Puteas dribbles through that control sprint into the box and it's a goal. To summarize the controlled sprint, you perform it by holding R1 whilst dribbling. That is only R1. It is best used with players with the technical play style or high dribbling stats. And you should use it in the attacking third to try and beat the defender. Tip number two, how to score one-on-ones. The first way is taking the goalkeeper on. And there's two ways to do this, either a ball roll or a shot cancel. To perform the ball roll, flick the right stick to either three or nine, depending on what way you want to ball roll. Every player can do this, apart from one star skillers, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem here. The ball roll is best used when the goalkeeper is rushing out. It's really, really simple. The goalkeeper rushes out, you time it perfectly, and you manage to ball roll him, and you have an open goal. We'll see this example with Ronaldinho here. I get on the end of a through ball, I see his keeper rushing out, and I know it's just about timing. Let go of everything on the controller, apart from that little ball roll there, and then Dino has an open goal to finish in. So whenever the goalkeeper rushes out and he's not stopping, if just make sure you're thinking, right, I need to ball roll, and just time it perfectly, and you have an open goal every single time. The other way to take on the goalkeeper is a shot cancel. The shot cancel is slightly harder to perform, and I'd say this is a bit more of an advanced tip. So if you're struggling, stick to the ball roll. But if you wanna go up a level, we have the shot cancel as well. So your first input is to hold circle. I would recommend doing this to about three bars of power. For some reason, when I shot cancel, I power my shot up more than a normal shot. I think it's because it gives me slightly more time to do the cancel. So if you know you're doing a shot cancel, I'd say press circle to about three bars of power. As soon as you've done that, let go, hold R2 and L2 at the same time, and be wary of where your left stick is, because wherever that is, is where you're gonna exit after performing the shot cancel. The shot cancel is best performed when you're walking towards goal, so don't be sprinting when you shot cancel. If you're sprinting, do the ball roll instead. If you're like walking towards the goal or you're in the box, that's when I would do it. So you do the shot cancel. We'll show you an example here with Chloe Kelly. I get near that area there and I'm not sprinting at 100%. And that's the time to do the shot cancel. The keeper always falls to the floor and it'll give you an open net as well. Just have to be wary of where my left stick is because you see with the example of Chloe Kelly, when my left stick is there and I'm pointing it that way, that's the way I want to exit. If I get that wrong, then I'm going to shot cancel straight into the goalkeeper. The next way to score one-on-ones is waiting for the goalkeeper to move. This one has no inputs. It's as simple as just waiting for the goalkeeper. So we'll analyze an example. I'll show you how it's best used. All you need to do is use your brain. There's nothing on the controller apart from doing nothing because you're waiting. 
So you see here, I have the ball with Neymar. I play it into Ginola and I have a one-on-one. -on -one. I know my opposition is going to move his goalkeeper. I'm waiting on it. I can see that he moves into the near post. I've waited enough time and I just shoot across goal because I've basically got an open goal there. The final way to score one-on-ones is using timed finishing. To use timed finishing, firstly, make sure that it's on in your settings. If you go to your controller settings, you can turn it on there. And time finishing works like a traffic cone. So if you don't time the shot well, it's red. If you time it average but not good enough, it's yellow. And if you time it to what you want to do, it's green. And all we're aiming to do is hit it green with every shot we take. So you shoot like normal, and then just as you're about to make contact with the ball, you press circle again. And if you do this, and you've done it perfectly on time, it's gonna be green. And if it's green, that means it's perfect. Basically, greening the shot will give you more power and more accuracy. There is also another color to the traffic light. If you're too late, then it's white. And white means it's basically a normal shot anyway. So you either wanna make sure you're on time or late. You definitely don't want to be early. Time finishing is best used when they don't rush out the goalkeeper and they don't move the goalkeeper and they're just standing there. So you've been one-on-one, -on -one, they haven't moved their goalkeeper, they haven't brought the goalkeeper out, and now you just have to score. Because they force you into doing this, you just have to score. The best way of doing this is just shooting and then timing it green as it'll give you shot the most chance of going in. We'll see with this example here. I get it to Puteas, I turn. I was expecting him to move his goalkeeper and he didn't. So then I just green it at the near post. If this isn't green, I think it gets saved by Van der Sar personally. But the green time finishing makes sure it's an even better shot and it's a goal. Let's summarize one-on-ones. If the goalkeeper's rushing out, either do a ball roll or a shot cancel. If you're playing someone with key movement, then wait for them to move their keeper and shoot the other way. And if they don't move their goalkeeper, hit your shot green to give yourself the most chance of scoring. Tip number three is jockeying. And I think jockeying is one of the most important things when learning how to defend. How to jockey is really simple as well. You just hold L2 whilst defending. So this is what I'd recommend. Go into your controller settings and put analog sprint on. And once you have that on, we're gonna do something called speed jockeying. I'm calling it speed jockeying. I think there might be a name for it, but we're going with speed jockeying. Now, when you're jockeying, you wanna be able to sprint at the same time. So you wanna be pressing L2 and R2. But with analog sprint, you have the ability to decide how hard you're sprinting. So, depending on how hard you press R2 down, the harder you press it, the faster you'll sprint. What I have noticed is I want to jockey, but I don't want to sprint at 100%, which is why the analog sprint is good. I've said analog sprint so many times then. If you're enjoying these pro tips, make sure you sub. I'm trying to get all of you better at EAFC. Let's analyze an example to make this a bit clearer. So I'm in a foot race with Kylian Mbappe here, but I'm Kunde. And Kunde also has the jockey play style, which makes this even better. I know he's going to change direction, so I'm jockeying him as he does it. He ball rolls inside. You can see Kunde, I've jockeyed, I've jockeyed, and then I can finally get myself in position to tackle. Now, if I was sprinting at 100% there, I would not have been able to change direction that quickly. But then also, if I wasn't holding sprint at all, he would have just sprinted past me like I wasn't there, which is why the analog sprint is so important when learning how to jockey. The second clip I'm gonna show you highlights it even more. He's running down the wing with Bellingham, and I've got Lorente, but I know I need to sprint, because otherwise he's gonna run around the outside of me. So as he starts beating me here, starts running towards me, I'm also jockeying at the same time. You'll be able to tell by the way Lorente like slightly moves his body, that I'm in a jockeying position. I'm holding my ground, I'm holding my ground because I know that he's going to try and work it inside. And you see when I backpedal with Lorente, I'm holding sprint at the same time, not all the way down again, maybe at 70 to 75%. Then it puts me in position to mark the pass, intercept it and stop him from getting it to his attacker in the box. Let's summarize the jockey. You hold L2 to perform it. To sprint jockey, you hold R2 whilst having analog sprint on. And it's best used in a defensive third when you're trying to stop someone from getting past you or mark the next pass. Tip number four is triggering runs. Now, this is the key to unlocking defenses. Honestly, I think it's such an underrated feature in the game and you have to be using it. It is really, really simple to do. To trigger a run, you tap L1 and the guy who runs will be where your analog stick is facing. So wherever your analog stick is facing, if you tap L1, that player is then gonna make a run forward. If you trigger a run using L1, it is then R1 to call that player back. So if he's triggered a run, he's run offside and you want him to come back, 
press R1. So the two buttons we're using, L1 and R1. Let's look at an example of how this is used effectively. Here I have the ball with my centre midfielder and I trigger my left back, Mendy. Now what this does straight away is make my opponent mark the Mendy. And this is the good thing about triggering runs. You don't have to use a run. There's two massive things to take away from this. So everybody focus, because this is important. So firstly, he watches my Mendy run. His player automatically goes back to Mendy. I decide that it's marked and I'm not going to use Mendy. So I pass to my striker instead. But the second part is where this is really important. Now look at his back line. You'll see that his right back, the one that triggered Mendy, is now further back than anyone else, which has pushed back his defense. And it's made the line uneven. Defensive AI is really, really silly in this game. They don't know what's going on so the defensive line has now been broken which has freed up a lot of space you see i pass it into ham and i score let's summarize triggering runs you do this by pressing l1 to send a player on a run and r1 to call the player short you can use this everywhere on the pitch to create space and it's best used to pick out your initial option or to use it as bait and then find a different pass once the defender is distracted tip number five play styles. Now there's no specific input for play styles because they're so broad and there's so many of them that this video would be about three hours if I told you all of them. But what I will tell you is you need to know what play styles your players have and what the best ones are. It is also worth noting there's play styles and play style plus. Play style plus is when there's a gold icon and that means they're unbelievable at it. That means they're a next level and every player only has one of them. If they do have one, they only have one. Playstyle, they'll probably have a few others, but Playstyle Plus means they're even better than usual. I'm going to tell you the playstyles that I look out for as a pro and what ones I think are really important. And we'll start with defending. Defending, I think Jockey is one of the most important ones. I've really noticed it on my Kunde card. So, so good because the player can jockey much quicker and it will help you defense. And the other defensive one is Anticipate. This one is really, really effective. Very useful for your center backs. If you can get a center back with Anticipate and Jockey, they're going to be good. For midfielders, I think the long ball pass is really effective. You see here with my Jabby Alonso, I trigger a run with the left back, which we've already mentioned in a previous tip. And then watch this pass with Jabby Alonso. It's just an L1 triangle, but because he's got the playstyle plus, he's even better at it. It goes all the way around, straight through to left back, which means I've just got up the pitch about 60 yards from one pass. And the other playstyles I look for in midfielders is the whipped pass. I think the whipped pass is really, really good for crosses. So basically, if you have a winger like Chloe Kelly, Lauren Hemp, and you cross the ball, it's going to be 10 times more accurate. As it, it makes chances for fun, honestly. It's such an easy chance creator. You're just out wide, you whip it in, and it's going to be very accurate every time. In attack, I think the best one to use is Finesse. It has just been patched, but I don't think it's been patched enough to worry about it. Basically, if you can green time your finesses with a finesse playstyle, they're going to be unbelievable. Hanson Trailblazer is my card of choice for this one. She is so good. I know she's very expensive, but for me... I managed to use her. If you can't afford Hansen, obviously, then go down to another player with finesse. There's Son, there's a couple of others in the game. They're really, really good. You can see here this example with Hansen. I get it there. Finesse absolutely flies in. Keeper doesn't stand a chance. I mean, Van der Sar's facing the wrong way. That's just how good it is. And the final place that I'd recommend is the power shot for scoring. Honestly, this might be my favorite one, and it's why I love using Ham so much. Ham, Marcus Rashford also has it. And it's so effective, honestly. You just use a power shot like usual. So R1, L1 circle. I taught you that on last year's tips. And then just shoot. Aim your shot and it will go in so many times, man. It's so accurate. Let's summarize play styles. Play styles make certain players better at certain things in game. And these are so overpowered if you use them right. You can find your player's play styles by clicking the right stick in, moving over right to the very end on R1. And then they all come up there. Whatever ones are highlighted are the ones that your player has. And if you're really struggling to find play styles, use community sites like Footwiz. Find your player on there and you'll be able to find it there. And finally, these are my recommendations. You might like other ones. Let me know in the comments if you like any other play styles that I haven't mentioned. Also, let me know if these five pro tips were useful. We've done this for four years now. And it seems like you'll really enjoy them. So hopefully you did. And hopefully you'll come away from this video a better EFC player than you were when you started. Goodbye.